Hi eBay sellers, it's Suzanne and this is my October 2021 sales update video. And this month was outstanding. Best month I've had since maybe July of 2020 when the world was freaking out and everything was closed and people were buying so much online. Now, I don't really like to speculate about why sales are up or down because there are so many variables that affect this and so many unknown factors that it's just impossible to draw conclusions. Plenty of other people do it um, on YouTube meaning, oh, stimulus checks went out, so everyone's spending their money, or it's this reason or that reason. But I will say that some things in my favor, or actually our favor as eBay sellers, are it's fourth quarter. This was the first month of fourth quarter when buying generally sees an uptick. We are still in the days of COVID, but people have learned to live with it and deal with it. And maybe there's more of a comfort level than there was last year. So that might be part of it. And another factor that actually is in my control is that I have been focusing on higher profit items for at least a year. And you'll be able to see by the sales prices of the items that that is now manifesting because most of what's in my store is higher profit. So I'm just very excited to share this with you because I have personally been working on this diligently every single day for a long time. And I'm just thrilled that my store is becoming more and more successful because what I'm doing you can also do. So I'm going to give you some commentary on why I bought certain items and you can look at the purchase price, the sales price, and most importantly the profit because that's what you get to keep. That's what goes in your pocket. That's what you get to spend on whatever you choose. Please do not focus on only sales prices because you could buy something for $49 and sell it for $50 and that's going to be negative profit. That's going to be a loss. So it's very important to pay attention to your profit because that's really the number that matters. Okay, so we're going to get started with Pat the Bunny. I paid 80 cents for this adorable little plush. He was actually 12 inches tall. And it was just the plush, not the plush with the book. This sold for $29.97. Profit was $26.27. And I just thought he was so adorable. He was fun to list. This is a vintage 1980s scarf. It has the 1980 Olympics Committee logo on it and also Coca-Cola. I paid $2.12, sold it for $29.97 full asking price. Profit was $24.67. This is a pair of Merrill hiking shoes. The style is Proterra Vim and these were damaged. I paid $6.35, took an offer of $35 just a couple of days after listing. My profit was $22.82. And the damage was the rubber on the sides of the toes was cracked and peeling. But the reason I bought these was because pink is an unusual color for these shoes this bright pink and these could be hiking shoes or water shoes 
So my thinking was if they're just going to wear them outside and they're going to get dirty and that's not going to matter that they are a little bit defective. So I did note that in the listing and picked up almost $23 profit on that in just a couple of days. This is a Lululemon bra. I paid $2.38 for this. Took an offer of $34. Profit was $28.25. This is a Soma bra, size 40C. I'm including the size because there is a misconception that only the really large sizes will sell and that's not true at all. I paid $4.24 sold it for $34.97 full asking price profit was $26.90 this is somewhat of a new category for me men's ties I'm working on learning that this was a Jim Thompson elephants tie and I thought this would just be perfect for a University of Alabama fan because it's the crimson background with the gray elephant after this sold, I reached out to the buyer because my curiosity was killing me. <laughs> and I asked if they were an Alabama fan, and he said no. He just likes elephants, and he thought this was a cool tie. So you never know why somebody's going to buy something. Don't ever assume, and it's totally fine to ask your customers hey I was just curious what are you gonna do with this why did you buy this sometimes they'll tell you sometimes not but I think it makes us better sellers when we understand a buyers motivation or if we assume something and then they prove us wrong it, it just teaches us not to assume anything <laughs> anyway I paid three dollars and eighteen cents sold for $39.97 full asking price profit was $31.94 this is a Sigrid Olsen 100% linen top I paid $6.35 it sold for full asking of $39.97 profit was $29.49 and doesn't it just look lovely with no wrinkles? <laughs> I actually enjoy ironing linen tops so that they look crisp like this. And I'll tell you a funny story about my history with ironing. When I was young married in 1988, my husband was in the corporate world and wore a dress shirt and tie every day there were no casual Fridays no casual anything so being a frugal young couple we decided not to take his shirts to the cleaners that I would iron them because it was about a dollar per shirt so that adds up over time it was no big deal but it always seemed like I waited till the end of the week like Sunday night got all these shirts to iron I didn't really feel like it I would force myself to do it because I had taken on that task and when I got into eBay I just loved ironing I would iron the golf shirts that I started off selling because I wanted them to look perfect and my attitude changed like I was ironing for profit <laughs> it was a want to instead of a have to so I don't mind setting up that ironing board and ironing a few shirts every week because I want them to look as nice as possible that's just me I'm just a perfectionist but um, I take my time and it's not a have to it's a want to and your attitude about something can completely change <laughs> depending on the circumstances okay this is a Columbia shirt the reason I picked this up is obviously the brand Columbia flannel red black and white plaid which is University of Georgia colors 
and on the pocket there you can see a small Georgia Bulldog embroidered. So all of those factors I was like yes this will sell for 40 bucks. I paid $4.76 for this. It sold for full asking of $39.97. Profit was $30.22. Okay, the Clorox bleach pens. You might have heard about this back in the summer. I think I put it everywhere. So <laughs> people have been posting these on the Money Making Mondays that they have found them and sold them. This was a set of two. I paid $4.60 total. They sold for full asking of $39.97. Profit was $30.86. Ray-Ban factory lenses. You might remember me saying that over the summer I got a pair of prescription sunglasses and these were the factory lenses that came in the frames. So as I was sitting there at the Walmart optical department and they were changing out the frames, the lady was like, oh, do you want these factory lenses? <laughs> and the first thing that popped into my mind was, I bet I could sell those. So yes, you can. So my price was zero because they came in the frames, but what I paid for was the frames and the prescription lenses. So this was just a little freebie on top of that. They sold for $39.97. Profit was $30.96. This is a set of vintage Lady Pepperell bath towels that were embellished with lace and these little fabric rosettes. I paid $3.18. They sold for $39.97. Profit was $33.40. Here's a Ralph Lauren small canvas tote. I paid $5.30 for this, took an offer of $40, profit was $27.47. Next up is a vintage Ralph Lauren denim shift dress. I paid $6.35, it sold for $40 on offer, profit was $34.42. Here's a Marmot jacket. I paid $4.31. It sold for $42 on offer. Profit was $33.22. Here's an item I've never sold before. Wilson Optima baseball glove. I paid $6.35. It sold for full asking of $49.97. Profit was $35.59. Another plush vintage Kindergund 1988 teddy bear. I paid 50 cents for him. He sold for $49.97 on full asking. Profit was $42.27. And this is why I love selling plush. The cost is so low, but the profit can be so high. Whoever would have dreamed? I wish I had explored this niche years earlier than when I actually got into it, but I love this category now. It's just so fun to see what these will sell for. Okay, a Chico's Faux Reptile Jacket. I thought this just looked cool. I paid $3.40, sold for full asking of $49.97. Profit was $40.37. Here's a vintage Disney Babies Crib Comforter. I picked this up because it actually had Disney Babies on the tag with uh, the year and where it was made, so I knew it was vintage. I paid $3.10, took an offer of $50. Profit was $42.21. Johnny was joystick dress. I paid $7.42, took an offer of $55, profit was $41.11. Here's a very cool item, a pair of vintage leather gloves. 
I found these just thrown in one of those baskets on the end of the Goodwill aisle. It was mixed in with children's socks and hats and it was totally in the wrong place, um, which happens a lot when people decide they don't want something, they just put it anywhere. So look at everything. <laughs> um, these were leather lined with rabbit fur and made in the Philippines. They were an extra large men's, so the larger sizes tend to sell better because there's less of them. I paid $3.18 it sold for $62 on offer. Profit was $51.40, and these sold in just a couple of days. So that was a fun, quick flip. Finn Comfort Sandals. This is a high-end German brand. I paid $6.35, took an offer of 80. My fixed price was $89, so this was close enough. Profit was $61.72 and these sold in about three days of listing. This is a Paul Frederick men's 100% camel hair coat. I paid $10.59, took an offer of 90. Profit was $65.16. Here's an unusual UGG tote bag. The body of it was a wool blend and the straps were leather and it was a promotional item for Nordstrom years ago. And in that very popular red and black buffalo check pattern. I paid $7.42 for this, took an offer of 90, profit was $70.17. Here's another wig from my wig buy at the Off the Beaten Path thrift store where there were about 20 wigs that were donated. So I chose a few of those to try out. I sold one in September, so this is from that same buy. I paid $20. It sold for $130. Profit was $93.15. And here is a Kugi sweater. I paid $6.35, took an offer of $175, profit was $146.89. And then another kooky sweater, I found these at the same time at the same store, and it was a store that I never would have expected to find something this expensive in. So this one I also paid $6.35, and it sold for $200, profit was $168.20. So let's look at the overall numbers. Number of items sold, 92. My cost of inventory was $306. Total profit was $2,672. Here's my year to date profit and you can see how the numbers are changing and we are going in the right direction. So I'm very excited about that. Profit per item was $29.04. My goal for this year is $30 profit per item. So I'm really close. And then if we look at that profit per item over the whole year, you can see that it is trending up and sharply up in October. So I do these videos to show what's possible and what I'm working on in addition to YouTube videos and podcasting and my online school, all the other things that I am diligently working on my eBay store at the same time. And if I can do it, you can do it. So it's just a matter of declaring what you want and working towards it. But just remember that patience is also a form of action. So it can be very frustrating when you're doing all this work and you're not seeing results, but you have to believe that they're going to come and just keep working on it. I hate to see people give up so quickly because they set unrealistic goals 
or they don't even track their numbers so they don't even know what their progress is so however you want to do it track your number if you want to do something like this with a chart tracking your progress that's fine you don't have to have fancy Excel sheets and do all this complicated stuff online you can just keep it in a notebook as long as you're tracking it and just try to be better than you were the month before and one more little nugget keep your business fun this has to be sustainable if you set goals like listing 20 items a day every single day and you're just glued to your computer or you're just selling the same things over and over and over and you get bored which that has happened to me in my history I just get tired of the same type of item and want to do something different just follow your intuition on that because if it's not fun you're not gonna to want to do it anymore and you don't have to be like other people some of these people on YouTube that they're about how much you can do and how fast you can do it and that's just not fun to me I like the thrill of the hunt learning about different kinds of items seeing how those items work for me and that's the beauty of an eBay business is you can just continue to explore new types of products new categories new places to purchase things to resell it's all there for you so keep it fun so that you will want to keep doing it because you don't want to burn out and then suddenly you hate eBay and you just give up and walk away so I hope this video was helpful I always appreciate your comments and I read every single one so comment below so take this information and do with it what you will but have a profitable productive and fun day on eBay thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye